When people ask questions like, how can we make Aikido effective? I, w I would like to ask the question, what do you mean by effective? Because I think very often the next word coming after effective is, how do we make Aikido effective against? Or how do we make sure that Aikido works as a form of self-defense? I ask different kinds of questions. I ask questions like, is this way of practicing true to non-violence? And if not, in what way is it not true? And in what way am I operating in a way that is ensuring that I'm in a conflict with this person? How can I remove myself from the conflict so that I'm not there as a fighter? I'm not there with somebody to pr something to prove to anybody. I'm not there against anyone, but I'm there really for the benefit of everybody. This way of looking at it has really helped me feel in my life on a day-to-day -day basis how how Aikido is this amazing thing that can be used in the world almost almost invisibly because when you really are in this state of not being against the situations that you meet in your life but you're receptive to them you're receptive to the other people involved uh, you don't allow yourself to be sucked into like a conflict mentality of how can I prevail against you how am I going to make sure that my argument is effective and that I prove my point and that everybody takes me seriously and that you don't you know laugh at me and think I'm an idiot or whatever if you're entering the situation with that with that any kind anything like that going on in your conscious or your subconscious mind you are you've removed the possibility of finding a non-violent Aikido solution because from the point where you look at defending yourself or attacking back in order to win you are you're, you're going against what what you're going to find in that situation of the other person and whatever they need to express through how they're moving or how they're being or how they're communicating i'm a i'm a nobody ranking wise and so why should you listen to me why why the hell should you care what i say about aikido uh and i guess i would say uh i wouldn't say that you should listen to me i would invite you to listen to me if if you think that what I'm saying is of interest to you. So if you want to get some perspective, climb a hill. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure where I heard that, but it seems to be my way of figuring stuff out. To so come and uh, climb up the nearest hill. And this one is overlooking a mountain over there. That's Kader Idris. And then uh, down here is uh, Talithlin Lake. So uh, I'm very lucky to live here. So I've decided to come up to, up to the top of this hill today to make this little uh, video blog and talk about Aikido um, and some of my own kind of experiments and findings uh, in Aikido. And it's to do a lot with um, a lot of talk in the, at the moment in the Aikido world about modernising Aikido, making Aikido effective, that kind of thing. And uh, I'm I'm also very interested in this topic myself. And uh, I uh, okay, I'll tell you a very little uh, brief kind of background about myself. So um, I've always been interested in martial arts ever since I was a, I was a kid. Um, I was I was bullied at school and uh, I noticed that like the kids in my class, the ones who went to karate and judo and kung fu lessons and stuff, they were the ones that didn't seem to get the hassle so much. So I I wanted to learn martial arts too, but uh, I wasn't allowed to. My, uh, my mum thought it would make me violent and possibly she was right, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, so whereas all the other people at school who... Uh, who had martial arts lessons kind of got that out of their system i didn't get that out of my system i carried it with me for a long time till i left home and went off to uh to university and then i joined the um jiu-jitsu club at the university uh not brazilian jiu-jitsu but um a kind of hybrid of uh uh japanese jiu-jitsu and judo um the uh it's called the jitsu foundation i think or at least they used to be. Um, 
So I was with them for about four years, uh, had a good time, but also I kind of realised in that time that I wasn't, I wasn't a fighter, um, that, you know, like there was this part of me that, that always kind of knew somewhere deep down that there had to be a way to sort out violence without, without becoming somebody who, who hurts other people, um, you know, in retaliation or, uh, because, you know, surely there has to be another way, you know, so I've always kind of believed in this quite deep down, even though, uh, I didn't really know how to do it. And, and what I've found in my life is that as somebody who who was kind of like not physically not physically strong but uh psychologically quite um feisty and determined and argumentative that although I couldn't beat somebody in a physical confrontation I could beat people you know any day of the week almost using my mind because I could find where where they were weak and exploit their kind of weaknesses in order to win an argument so I could outwit them with logic or I could like confuse them or I could uh, deny something that they were sure of or all the you know all these kind of ways that you can intellectually move the move the targets around when you're in a in a in an argument or a conflict with someone to make it possible for you to win and so you know through this way I and, and through debating on the internet all this kind of thing I learned to kind of you know win arguments but again it didn't feel good it was like yeah I could make I could make a great point about something and maybe someone else would admit that like yeah sure you have a good you have a point there or whatever I don't know but um in the end I never felt very good about this way of uh of like dealing with things because I didn't feel good if I won that way and somebody else was like maybe they were temporarily defeated but they would then go away, look into their point of view again, find all the flaws in my point of view, come and put their side of it back across again. And it was just like this kind of, like a ping pong match the whole way through of like, well, you win this round, so now I go away and I bolster my arguments and then I come back and defeat you the next time. And and uh, this kind of thing was a theme for a long time in my life. Um, because I thought this was the way that things were sorted out, you know, like logic and reason and argument, debate, that this was the way to do things. And uh, I found that it was a very unsatisfactory way of, of operating, especially with, you know, people you love, people who are close to you, because, yeah, you can win an argument with your partner, but who actually wins in that scenario you know like maybe you get to you get to be right about something but meanwhile your partner feels terrible and and it's the same with uh you know other family members or children or anybody really that you get into these kind of daily minor conflicts with and there are different ways of going about it and I would occasionally meet people who didn't have this kind of argumentative confrontational way of sorting things out and and like they would seem to be able to do things that I just couldn't do because I was always looking for how can I make my uh, my argument how can I bolster my position so that I will prevail so that I'll win and uh, get to walk away victorious from this situation meanwhile at some point um I, I became a I became a parent about nearly ten years ago now, and just by accident on YouTube one day I found this video um, about uh, nonviolent communication, which sounded like intriguing to me because I was kind of, you know, it was the kind of thing I was interested in, but I I hadn't come across it before, so I went and uh, watched the video, and it kind of it was just a role play really, but it was showing a kind of situation role play between a parent and child where. I think the parent wants the child to tidy their room and the child's giving all these reasons why they don't want to tidy the room and the parent's giving all the reasons why the child should just tidy the room and and you know they kind of get to loggerheads because they're both going against each other and maybe in the end the parent gets their way by you know coercing the child into tidying the room and maybe the room gets tidied but the point being in that process everybody loses because 
the parent gets their way against the child, the child begrudgingly does what the parent wants and, the, and you know, the relationship suffers in the long term. And so they gave a second example of the same role play where instead of the parent's objective being to get what they wanted to happen uh, one way or another where I'm going to go into this room with the objective that now it's time for you to tidy this room and I'm going to make you do it. Instead of that, the parent goes into the room and makes a request of the child, like, you know, would you be willing to tidy this room? And the child says, I don't want to, you know. And the parent has a choice at this point because you can say, well, why don't you want to? You know, the room's a mess. It's, it's your mess. It's been a mess for days. You have to tidy it up. So tidy it up you know you could you could go that way but then that puts you again in this kind of a battle situation with somebody and the way that they worked through this situation was to um for the parent to make a request of the child being willing for the child to say no and then to listen to what the feelings were behind that no like you know maybe they were just enjoying what they were doing at the moment and they didn't want to stop because they were having fun playing or learning something or you know, there's there's all kinds of superficial reasons that people come up with for uh, the stuff that's going on inside inside them, which is all based on more like feelings and needs and things like that. So, uh, so I I was kind of intrigued by this nonviolent communication video, and I looked into it a bit more, and I found this kind of well, it seemed like a communication tool to begin with, but as I looked into it more. I I realised that it wasn't really just about how you communicate with other people. Like, you know, if I learn to say these this particular sequence of words in a particular way when I'm in this kind of argument situation, if I say these words in this order, I will get my objective, uh, which is, you know, that I win the argument and I win it, you know, without upsetting you too much, but nevertheless I still win. That if I use the the, the tools of nonviolent communication, like the words that they give you as examples of how to say things. If I didn't have my intention, if my intention was to use those things to get my own way, that it would never work. And I would be like, well, this nonviolent communication stuff's great on paper, but actually it's a load of crap when you come to an argument situation because you say the words that you're supposed to say and the whole thing just doesn't work. So what's the point? It's obviously a load of crap, you know, and I just thought it was pointless, it didn't work. And I, and then sort of, like I just, I kept trying, I, I something about it just kind of appealed to me anyway, so I kept, I stuck at it, because I, I did understand that you had to practice this thing, and that maybe you would just get better at it, but I, I didn't understand the way in which you were supposed to get better, but nevertheless, I kind of stuck with it anyway. Um, because I could feel sometimes that there was just this tiny little shift that when I approached a situation with a kind of receptivity to whatever it seemed like the other person was angry about or upset about or, uh, you know, thought was my fault, if I, if I could just kind of put my defensive barriers down for a moment and just listen to that person and, and just try to hear that they were upset and that that they were sharing that with me and to t to like try to receive that as a like a kind of a gift you know it's it's a funny thing to say to receive some to receive it as a gift when somebody is uh attacking you in some way or other if they're critical of you or they you know it seems like they're blaming you for something to to be like glad to hear that and say thank you for that and and to take it on board without without kind of at the same time sending out a, a defensive reaction to it that's like, well, all the reasons that that's not true or whatever. So I began to see that there was this uh, a kind of way of interacting in an argument situation that was not the same as just letting the other person get their own way and dominate you completely and destroy you in the process and... All, you know, all those kind of things that we think is going to happen if we don't defend ourselves. And at the same time, because of wanting to, to, be, to learn how to be receptive to the other person and to hear what they were 
hear what was really going on for them through all the kind of reasons they were giving for justifying their anger or whatever, if I could just hear the stuff going on inside about how they were not feeling okay and that they were they were kind of reaching out in some way that they that I was the person who they were reaching out to in some way even though it was coming across in a really tragic way of expressing it that it was it was like coming across as an attack that if I could somehow just hear through that attack that there was a a, a need that maybe they weren't even in touch with themselves that that completely changed the way our interaction would go so so I kind of began to understand on some level that this 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 thing could work in a certain way if you learn how to use it right but I still I just couldn't do it because I'm this argumentative person at least at least I have been for as long as I can remember and um I just you know I really like being right because who doesn't like being right <laughs> because you know if you're right then stuff makes sense to you and and uh you know you don't have to worry about things because you get to have that kind of security that you can hold on to of like yeah I get to be right about this thing so I know where I stand on that and I know where I stand on that and here are all these things I can use to to like hold myself up a bit more bolster my own position so that when something comes along and challenges that position I know that this is true this is true I can grab hold of all these things and they're they're kind of like my weapons that I've prepared myself with for when something comes along that tries to knock me from that position of, of comfort and security so nevertheless uh, I, I began to experience a few times where this kind of different thing would happen and without either person in the argument needing to drop their side of it and lose that if you could just stay where you were together and kind of like agree to work through it in a certain way which was you are putting your your where you're coming from but you're not putting it against that person you're just you're just expressing it as uh, as a need which can't really be against anything because it's never in competition with anything in the first place it's just it just exists you know it's a feeling it just exists it it, it doesn't really come from anywhere in a way it's just there so if you could learn to express those things in that way and if you could hear through whatever the other person was saying that sounded like critical of you that um, what they were expressing was also feelings and needs in that way and that those feelings and needs were not against you or against anything but that at this time they were just being expressed in a way that seems to be against you if you can hear through all that then you find this way to to connect with the person in whatever they're saying and and you suddenly start to uncover these ways of sorting the problem out to resolve it that neither person's really neither person has thought of as such but nevertheless once you get in touch with what you both need the solutions to the to the situation come about very rapidly and very collaboratively and everybody walks away from it feeling like yeah that was okay we sorted it out and and nobody walks away from it feeling like they lost or that they had to compromise even so there's no compromising because everybody is finding a way to work together so that everybody is included in the solution and everybody is in included completely in the solution not just partially but it's a solution that is receptive to everything that is going on and everything that needs to happen in order for the the sort of peaceful unity of the people involved to be restored and this this, this process really works at, on a on a communications level but it also works on an internal level because you are if you if you have if you're in a state of conflict in yourself there's a kind of argument going on in you and you you can you can end up in an argument with yourself inside yourself going you know well this is this one no 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 and you've got these various different parts of you the part that wants to like you know be good and look after other people be kind whatever the part of you that's like well screw those guys i'm all in it for myself because if i don't you know if i don't take that thing then someone else is gonna exploit me or whatever you know these kind of parts that are all aspects of your persona your personality or whatever you want to call it they're they're all aspects of you 
and you have to find a way inside one body to incorporate those things so that you are able to find a path forward in life where you're not completely in conflict with yourself the entire time and so I also realized that using nonviolent communication I was able to conduct the same kind of inquiry with my different conflicting parts inside myself to find how how those parts could work together instead of working against each other so I kind of became aware on on that level that this way of doing things also uh, had a lot to offer and then as a a martial artist and you know not not a particularly good one really uh, I, I'll say basically I'm a uh, I'm comparatively a nobody in the martial arts world. I don't have any black belts. Um, I have about 10, maybe, let me think now, when did I start? 2000, uh, no, 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 back, 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 2000, 2000, I think. So yeah, I guess, I guess 15 years or so of like various, uh, various different things. I've done uh, jujitsu, this, uh, kind of hybrid one that's taught in a lot of the British universities, a mixture of um, Japanese jiu-jitsu and judo as well. Um, kind of self-defense oriented. It's okay. I, I kind of liked it. Uh, I think, you know, they certainly have some good self-defense stuff to teach there. Um, and what else? Uh, did a, I dabbled in capoeira for like a year and a half. It was kind of fun. I realized it wasn't for me. Um, and now I've I've been living in Wales for the last uh, eight nine years now. Um, I I was I practiced with uh, a Thai Jitsu class here, which I would have said was kind of very similar to what I would call Jiu Jitsu, really. So, again, kind of judo influenced, uh, self defense oriented style of Jiu Jitsu. So, but you know I'm. I'm I, I'm a I'm a nobody ranking wise, and so why should you listen to me? Why why the hell should you care what I say about Aikido? Uh, and I guess I would say uh, I wouldn't say that you should listen to me. I would invite you to listen to me if if you think that what I'm saying is of interest to you, and maybe if you know it's my intention that if somebody hearing this can kind of just hear what I'm trying to the 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 point I'm trying to get across. That maybe uh, that will be of use to other people and kind of help you find your way uh, on your own, um, you know, on your own journey into uh, self-discovery. And uh... so I've been I've been studying with this uh, Thai Jitsu school, and I moved a bit further away uh, to a nearby town, and I saw there was an Aikido class nearby, so I signed up. Uh, was going to that for a while but ended up moving house again I've, I've moved house quite a lot uh in the last nine years or so um so i moved to another town where there was also another aikido class uh signed signed up there i went there for like a year and a half or so uh kind of yoshin can uh offshoot style so the first the first aikido class i went to was iwama background and the second was kind of yoshin can style and what I noticed with the two, the two Aikido schools I went to was, although I really enjoyed the training and I loved all the people and I loved the kind of like, uh, the energy with which the training was done was like a really positive way of training. I really enjoyed that, but I knew I noticed that what what was kind of interesting to me was how similar some of the the techniques were to the to the jujitsu that I'd previously studied. Um, and in in many cases, the techniques were you know exactly the same, and had they they had the kind of same feeling to them as well, like this feeling of somebody putting you on the floor, uh, using pain to make you get there, to make you go there. And so I was like, I kind of became a bit disillusioned with the whole idea of Aikido as this non-violent martial art because I was like, well, okay, so it's non-violent, but but we're learning to hurt people here and these techniques definitely hurt. So, okay, so maybe there's a kind of moral philosophy argument that says that it's better to hurt somebody a little bit and control them rather than, you know, kill them or whatever. So you're using the minimum amount of, uh, the minimum amount of force in order to prevent a greater 
evil happening or something like that. And, you know, I, I, I can go along with that to a point. But I... I uh, I began to just to to kind of realise that if there was some non-violence to be found within Aikido, and this has really been my my interest in a way, is like if it is is non-violence possible, and if so, how how do you get how do you get there? How do you make it happen? And how can somebody like me, who may not be like physically violent, but uh, is certainly conflicted and likes to argue and win and and can be uh you know destructive on a kind of psychological level how uh, if non-violence is possible can somebody like me learn to learn to uh, improve their capabilities with it in order to uh create less trouble for myself in the world and create less misery for other people and and can i can i learn to use that in such a way that um if i do find myself in a situation where i'm in a physical conflict with somebody am i gonna am i gonna position myself in a way that makes that situation worse brings me into like more conflict with that person or am i gonna find a way to connect with them in that situation so that we de-escalate the situation and in in the end nobody needs to have a fight nobody needs to get hurt nobody needs to lose nobody needs to go home feeling that somebody else beat them and that that you know if only they could just get revenge or if only they'd been lucky enough and maybe they'll be carrying that around looking for an opportunity to to get back at that person you know it's like these I, I saw for a long time these kind of things these cycles of violence they happen in this way because it's like it's like dominoes that are lined up and they just start falling over and each one knocks over the one next to it and and it just kind of never comes to an end because all the all the justifications for violence are all based on other justifications for violence and so unless you get to the point where you're stop where you stop trying to find the justifications for well you did this to me so therefore I'm justified in doing that to you that it just goes on and on forever and I had experienced through nonviolent communication that there just there had to be another way that there just what there there was another way in fact I'd experienced it lots of times that there was this other way and sometimes I could almost find my way to it but something was missing because I was still trying to apply these words in a kind of mechanical way like a bunch of lines that you would read like a script like this line this line this line and then my verbal technique will work and the situation will be resolved as if that's what's going to happen nevertheless I was trying with that approach and I I realized a similar thing was going on on a physical level with Aikido my Aikido practice that that I was still trying to use a technique in order to prevail in order to get the better of that person in the situation and that I it might be less violent but it wasn't non-violent and it didn't really seem to be leading to non-violence either because people who'd been practicing for like 25 or 30 years were still very skillful in the way they employed those techniques but nevertheless it certainly wasn't non-violent it was it was controlled but it hurt and it didn't feel good to be on the receiving end of it so I kind of I started to wonder if this actual physical non-violence was possible so anyway uh, fast forward another six months or so I was looking on YouTube and I felt nostalgic and looked up uh, I was trying to look up my old Aikido school had the word takamusu in the name uh, takamusu meaning like spontaneously arising from out of nowhere something like that and um, instead of finding videos of my old school I found a video of this guy uh, a teacher Aikido teacher Corky Quakenbush sensei uh, he's a he's an Aikido sensei he lives in uh, Los Angeles and he had a video showing a beginner producing this kind of spontaneous Aikido that wasn't based on techniques but was based on the intention to be of benefit to the person attacking you and immediately I was quite interested in this because if what he was saying was was true there was a guy a beginner with no you know with only a few weeks experience who was doing these kind of things that people who've done Aikido training would call Aikido techniques but this beginner had no idea what the techniques were but nevertheless they were coming out of the of the interaction and so Corky was saying that um, 
there are these different kind of battlefield intentions which he would call spear shield and withdraw um which correspond to uh fight freeze and flight in that order um you know so the the kind of uh, defensive uh, responses of your body when you're under threat uh, fight, flight, fight, flight and freeze and the Aikido represents a different way of dealing with that situation which is none of those things but something else which is the, the intention to enter the situation of conflict in a way that is of benefit to all, all of the people involved all of the universe really um, how how to enter that conflict situation for the benefit of all and that if you can actually do that within yourself then you never enter the conflict situation in a way that puts you up against the other person to begin with because you're only there to be of benefit to them and that in Aikido this this correlates to the uh, relationship between the, the Uki and the Nagi or Tori uh, who is the Aikidoist, you know, the Uki being the one giving the attack, generally, and the Tori or Nage being the one performing the throw or doing the technique or however you, however it's been explained in, in many different ways, in many different styles of Aikido, many different ways of practicing. But I began to, to see that uh, maybe what Corky was doing was something kind of different. So I waited about a year or so to meet him and feel it for myself and it really was quite different he was not doing something to people he wasn't like trying to put a technique on me he was allowing my attack towards him to produce a technique with his way of interacting with it that was not trying to manipulate me into making something happen but was going along with what I was doing in a way that he couldn't be harmed in the process because whatever I was sending towards him, he was just offering support to it and not not trying to find a way in to use it to exploit me. And so this is kind of what brings me to the the main point of this whole talk, really. I hope I've got enough time to get through it. So I, I identified uh, in my Aikido practice that there was, quite, there was quite a big problem with the way that training was done because I'd, I heard... Um, different things from different people but one thing that stuck with me was somebody saying that their teacher their shihan had told them that when you were when you were okay when you were the person you know quote unquote giving the attack that you you stood there like a kind of a rag doll waiting while your partner performed their technique on you and that you you were to be as relaxed as possible so that as they perform the technique and throw you um that, that's how you that's how you do it without getting hurt is to be as relaxed as possible so this is a criticism often leveled at aikido that um that the that the way it's practiced is unrealistic because it's too cooperative that the partner who's who's you know having the technique done on them is not really doing anything they're just standing there cooperatively while somebody puts a technique on them on on an effectively you know, like a ragdoll partner. And I totally agree with that criticism. I think that that way of practicing Aikido maybe will lead to like technical proficiency in that you know where to move and how to find the techniques and how to put them on somebody. But because because of the way that that form of practice works where you're, where you're putting something on somebody and they're, co they're, they're going along with it in order to stop you inflicting too much pain on them, um, because that way of practicing is inherently kind of, I would say, if you're hurting somebody, I would call that violence, uh, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you call that violent, hurting people? So my interest in, in non-violence led me to not want to do that, to not want to hurt people, and to just be looking for this other way of how to interact with violence, but without becoming violent myself, without being sucked into fighting it, running away from it, or just like you know blocking it out not allowing it in being kind of dead to it that there, that there had to be this other way because I'd experienced it a few times that there was this other way of of interacting in conflict situations whereby nobody lost and everybody went away from it feeling a lot better than before it had begun and so I began to 
through training with Corky as well, I, his form of training is very experimental. So he doesn't really have, he, he doesn't do techniques at all, but there is a kind of attack intention that is directed towards controlling or in other, in other ways, putting you as the Aikidoist in a kind of compromised position so that you, you can really feel how you're being attacked. And then what he does is through, through sort of role play of, uh, finding the intention to be of benefit to that person so quite often we work with giving them a glass of water something like that that you've been you're held but you find how without going against that person if you really want to just be of benefit to to them um, it kind of unlocks your body to move in in such a way because as long as you never go against them but you just you just touch up against them and you feel where it is that they are defending or attacking from where where it is that they are pushing into you and instead of trying to push back through it in order to defeat them or exploit that weakness that you've discovered you just touch up against it and you you stay there together and you commit to to sticking with that person and through the resolution of the uh, the situation and so when when an attacking energy meets that kind of receptiveness that is ready to to go along with it and that is positioning itself already so that it's not putting up any kind of resistance that can be smashed through and destroyed so that everything everything coming towards it will will stick to it but and, and be and be supported without being pushed back against and knocked over but this is actually this is really possible on a physical level and it's possible uh it's possible in a in a communications uh Inter interaction as well where you're talking you know you can do this you can do this when you talk you can do this with your body and and the way that you can do it with your body is to make sure that you are never putting yourself up against another person in any situation so when people ask questions like how can we make aikido effective i w i would like to ask the question what do you mean by effective because I think very often the next word coming after effective is how do we make Aikido effective against or how do we make sure that Aikido works as a form of self-defense, something like that, as an effective self-defense form. And these questions, I think, are they're great questions to be asking and I've asked them myself too. Um, I think that the problem is, in a way, when you are, when you are asking these kind of questions, that step alone is taking you outside of the zone where you're going to be able to find um, an Aikido that is actually non-violent and effective um, because if you are entering a situation with uh, the intention to prevail in some way that you're going to get your way over that person that your technique or your way of moving is going to dominate them and prove a point that you are you know, that your technique works, that it, your martial art is effective, that your training hasn't been a waste of time, that you get to call it self-defense, all these kind of things. All these ways of looking at what Aikido can do are, are setting it up in such a way that from the very point that you ask those questions, you step outside the zone of where you're going to find an answer within, certainly within a kind of non-violent way of looking at Aikido. So I... I ask different kinds of questions. I ask questions like, is this way of practicing true to non-violence? And if not, in what way is it not true? And in what way am I operating in a way that is ensuring that I'm in a conflict with this person? How can I remove myself from the conflict so that I'm not there as a fighter? I'm not there with somebody to pr something to prove to anybody. I'm not there against anyone, but I'm there really for the benefit of everybody. And this is a this is a very fascinating question to explore, because there is no end to this question. Um, you know, I'm really not claiming to be an expert on this by any means at all. I I claim no expertise whatsoever. I'm just telling you about a thing that I've found is very interesting, and I encourage other people to look into it themselves because maybe it's not quite the way that you've looked at it before. And so this way of looking at it has really helped me feel in my life on a day-to-day -day basis how, how Aikido is this amazing thing that can be used in the world almost 
almost invisibly because when you really are in this state of not being against the situations that you meet in your life but you're receptive to them you're receptive to the other people involved uh you don't allow yourself to be sucked into like a conflict mentality of how can I prevail against you? How am I going to make sure that my argument is effective and that I prove my point and that everybody takes me seriously and that you don't, you know, laugh at me and think I'm an idiot or whatever. If you're entering the situation with that, with that, any kind, anything like that going on in your conscious or your subconscious mind, you are you've removed the possibility of finding a non-violent Aikido solution because from the point where you look at defending yourself or attacking back in order to win, you are, you're, you're going against what, what you're going to find in that situation of the other person and whatever they need to express through how they're moving or how they're being or how they're communicating. Um, so if you see so how many how many people in aikido have have trained how, for however many years they've trained aikido and maybe never once even stepped into a, into aikido from the perspective of it not being about defending yourself it not being about uh your your technique being superior and and how you can use that technique to less violently defeat somebody but how how many people have really trained aikido from a place of looking at looking inside themselves at what's going on and how they can position themselves with a with an expression of physical force coming towards them how can they how can they position themselves without going against that force without going against the person that that force appears to be coming from and unless you've actually felt this so I don't know I, I guess I got lucky I met somebody who could actually do it and unless you've actually felt this it's very weird because it kind of feels a bit like doing nothing in a way because when this force is coming towards you you're 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 not trying to do something to it you're not trying to exploit it or find a weakness or find where you can get in there to to put your technique on and subdue that person in order to end the situation you're not doing that at all you're just feeling where it is and how you can offer it your support without going against it and if you if you really explore this in your training if you explore how can i from whatever attack you want so scale it up however you like i mean i occasionally get to play with people who can submit me but it's do it doesn't happen as often as i'd like so i would really like to find some people who are much better at things like bjj uh who can you know easily tap me out because i think all forms of training uh, are are legitimate and all for all ways of doing it have have merit but let's remember in aikido there's this relationship between the uke and the the tori the nage and if you have two people that are both trying to put a technique on each other or both trying to throw each other both trying to score a point you you haven't got the relationship that makes aikido possible but you've got two com competitors trying to go against each other and so that you may find some kind of ways of technical Aikido being able to be used in that situation. But in the end, whatever you come up with through that route is not going to be non-violent because of it being against each other. So I would say if, you, if you're going to if you're going to train with people who are, are grapplers or BJJ practitioners, um, maybe explore how keeping the relationship where one is one is de definitely attacking and one is definitely there to look after the attacker not to go against them but to be there for the benefit of the attacker the aikidoist the whole of humanity the whole universe really how to be of benefit in that situation by not going against but just being there for for that other person being there with them not doing a technique to them if you explore this then all kinds of stuff suddenly unlocks itself and becomes possible uh because this is really i think where the the kind of magical stuff of aikido seems to happen and when it happens maybe people don't recognize it because 
Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So a really great example, Dan the Wolfman. He he can he can really apply Aikido in in you know MMA situations. But I think if you watch his videos, when you when he when he really gets his Aikido techniques to work is because he the reason it works for him is because he's so relaxed really he's so he's so confident in his martial ability that he doesn't ever need to get threatened by an opponent in a in a fight situation like that so actually although he's kind of squaring off with them when it comes down to it he 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 puts he uses his Aikido very gently and he's not he's not physically threatened so he doesn't need to go against somebody so he's he can use it skillfully without concern for himself because also he's not worried about being hit that kind of thing so so that's why it's interesting to watch him doing it because he can he can really do this and he can do it inside a kind of competitive situation but i think the way it's working for him probably is because he's not really he's not expecting to lose he's not expecting to be defeated he's just confident and therefore not able to be sucked into the other person's attempts to like apply a technique against you in order to beat you. So yeah, gosh, I've probably said more than enough here. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to go away and watch all this and edit it. Um, yeah, I guess I'll say, um, I, I love experimenting with Aikido. I love trying new things out. Uh, I'm always happy to meet people who can show me new stuff and uh, who can <laughs> put me in uh, situations that I haven't been in before because that's how I that's how I like to find my uh, edges of my the edges of my capabilities. And if Aikido has this uh, the philosophy of Aikido being masakatsu agatsu, uh, meaning uh, true victory self victory or sometimes translated as true victory victory over the self but i don't know i don't i don't like that way of looking at it because i'm not looking to defeat myself in this situation i'm looking for how can i become the fullest expression of what is actually possible and what is possible i don't know so how do i how do i go forward in my life not necessarily thinking that i know what is possible and what isn't possible but how do i how do i go forward with receptivity to what i might find and how how can I then take that on board and then use it to be of benefit to not just myself or my family, but the whole of humanity, the whole of our projects of trying to live on this planet together um, without being in perpetual conflict with each other. And I think that's where the real the real gold of Aikido is to be found. It's not really in this kind of, you know, fighting situations. That's just that's like a way of training it and that's a kind of a byproduct of the training in a way is 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 on the physical domain but really what i um what i try to learn from aikido what i take away from it is how to operate in the world in a way that doesn't put me in conflict with what's going on around me and honestly it's really difficult for somebody like me i'm hopeless at it a lot of the time so there's always places that I can practice. There's always time uh, for, you know, there's always, there's always opportunities for training. Um, and that's where it becomes a practice for the whole of your life, how to, how to live your life without going against the stuff that comes towards you, but how to position yourself so that whatever comes, you're already not going to be against it. And so that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to explore through Aikido, what I'm trying to express. And, uh, I think if you're interested from a kind of a uh, competitive perspective maybe there's there's something there is something there I don't know I I'm sure there's certainly a lot to be there's a lot to be said for training with people in ways that are not trained conventionally in in conventional aikido uh I'm sure that that's a very valid uh line of inquiry and I totally agree with it so um yeah maybe that's enough maybe i'll just stop there um i'd love to hear any responses in the comments i'm not i'm not i'm not usually one for talking to the camera like this i normally just make little videos showing my kind of solo forms of of training um but i am planning to make some more videos so hopefully i can uh make some videos with some adult training partners and show you uh what i mean by some of this stuff how it actually translates on the physical domain um 
it may not be what you're looking for if you're hoping to win competitions and that kind of thing but it's it's something so much more than that i think uh i don't want to lose sight of that in 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 aikido because um the the project of aikido is much bigger as far as i'm concerned much bigger than um than a martial art it's it's a way for humanity to navigate conflict uh better together without anybody needing to come out of it feeling like they lost and whether or not whether or not that's actually possible um i i in my experience i would say it is possible but also it doesn't matter to me whether it is possible or it isn't possible because my intention to 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 conduct my life in a way that that goes forward with that remaining as a question like is it possible and how can i take a step towards it i think that is a very uh well i don't know what word you, what word to use really i can't think of a better thing to spend my life doing for sure so that's my intention with it really and uh and i've also found that people love learning it and they love discovering that it is possible to uh to go forward in your life without being in conflict with everything around you um that there's a certain kind of <sighs> a relaxation and pe and peace in a way that comes from dropping all that stuff in a way just just putting it down and being willing to have your assumptions questioned and to be willing to be uh to be receptive to other people without it needing to be against you and to take away from your experience and your expression of of your own humanity <sighs> so yeah uh I have no idea how long I've been talking for. I hope this video has been of interest to someone or other. Um, uh, I look forward to hearing from anybody who would be interested in coming to explore some of this stuff. And if you have questions about how it translates into a physical practice, I would be delighted to make some more videos and, and go through it. And, and uh, I wish you all the best on your own, on your own explorations. Um, I feel very confident that all of us are going to get there together one way or another. Um, it's a very, it's a very exciting time to be alive, to be able to share information and, and, uh, ideas with people in this way. So if you've watched to the end of this video, I'm very, I'm very appreciative of your time and, uh, I hope you'll join me again another time. Thanks very much.